Okay, in this lecture, I'm just going to introduce the input output analysis, a brief introduction. So, what is input output analysis? Input output analysis is a form of macroeconomics analysis based on the interdependencies between economic sectors or industries. So, normally, we can also call it the inter industry analysis. Some economists, some business analysts also call it inter industry uh, analysis. Basically, this method is commonly used for estimating the impact of positive or negative economic shocks and analyzing the ripple effect throughout the economy. So, most of the economists, most of the policy makers use these input output analysis in order to measure an impact on a specific economy due to some uh, unknown or uh, some known specific factors. So, they use this input output analysis to study, to estimate those impact. Maybe those will be a positive impact or maybe those will be a negative impact. Maybe it will be a positive shock or maybe it will be a negative shock. So, this type of economics analysis was originally developed by Wesley Leontip. Wesley Leontip was born on August 5th of 1905 in St. Petersburg in Russia, the son of Wesley Leontip and his wife Eugenia. A brilliant student, in the start, he have faced some specific problem due to some uh, uh, vehement opposition to the lack of intellectual and personal freedom under the country communism regime. So, due to that, he also spent some time in jail. He was arrest arrested several times. Then he moved to the United States where he enrolled in the Harvard University. At Harvard, he developed this series and methods of input-output analysis. He developed the input-output table of the United States economy. And due to these, due to this hard work, he also earned the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1973. Uh, the, the foundation of input-output analysis basically involved input-output tables. So, table mean, I will show you that what is, what kind of table is it? What kind of Intermediate consumption included in this input table, export, import, value added, household, final demand, etc. etc. So, I will discuss that while showing you a very simple example. Such table, basically the input output table, include a series of rows and column of data that quantifies the supply chain for our sector of an economy. So, basically, when we producing something, we need some input. When we process those input, we work on those input, then we produce some output. And for whom we produce those outputs, for customer, for user, for consumer, we basically use those. So, those, these input-output model is centered in the idea of inter-industry transactions. Industry uses product of other industries to produce their own products. So, there is a very simple example, automobile industry. Automobile industry producing cars, trucks, etc., etc. So, they need steel. So, from here they get steel, from the steel mills. They need some glass, they need some rubber, they need tire, they need plastic, they need seat covers, they need leather for the seat covering, etc, etc. So, output from one industry become input to another. When you buy a car, you affect the demand for glass, plastic, steel, etc. Because if the demand of a specific product, of the demand is of a specific uh, material is going up, it will definitely impact on the price when the demand increase in the simple Law of demand, we say that when the demand of a specific product increase, the price is also increased. So, we are still in the automobile factory. So, I, as I already discussed, there will be two type of demand then. One will be external demand, one will be intermediate consumption. So, when you, when an automobile factory manufacturing cars, they need steel, they need glasses, they need tires, plastic and other components. So, basically, from the tri producer, they produce the tire producer produce tires and to whom they sell? To the car maker, to the individual consumer, to the school district. This is final demand for the tires. And they also supply these tires to whom? The automobile factory, intermediate demand for tires. Okay, so this is just a circulation. So if I construct this, it the whole economy will be working in a circle. So input output analysis is an accounting framework. Just like in an accounting framework, we have uh, debit credit, okay. So, input output analysis will also show you a debit credit accounting. Input output analysis can be used to predict changes in overall economic activity as a result of some changes in local economy. And basically, this provides a description of local economy. There, what's going on? How much units coming in and how much going out? How much input using and how much units uh, producing? This is just the 
this structure of a traditional input output table. So what this table include? You can see this zij, this is basically the intermediate consumption matrix. We call this intermediate consumption matrix. In the column, in the column and in the rows are different sectors of the economy, are different industries in the economy who produce goods. So some industries using specific input from other sectors from other industries. And this is been the total output of all these industries. Okay. This is primary input, which is including imports. And this is final demand, which is also including export. Normally we denote with VJ primary input include transport margin. It's also include uh, the salaries. Okay. And the, these are the total inputs. So in input output table, the row sum, the row sum will be equal to the column sum. Okay. So the input will be equal to the output. It is also called a symmetrical table. Why it is called a symmetrical table? Because industries are listed in the header of each row and column. The data in each column correspond, the data in each column correspond to the level of input used in the industry production function. For example, the column for auto, let's suppose this is auto manufacturing, this first sector, the auto manufacturing show the resources required for building automobile. For example, steel, the second one is steel industry, aluminium, plastic, electronic, and so on. So input output models typically include separate tables showing the amount of labor required. So this, this primary input also showing the labor required per dollar unit of investment or production. This is our final demand. So I mean household demand, government demand, export. Okay. And when we add the intermediate consumption and we add with the final demand, it will give us each sector output. So when you add this, you will get the total input and this is total output. So this is the basic structure of the input output table. Another example, I just want to share with you that you further understand the concept of input output table. For example, this is a simple input output table of three different sectors, agriculture, health and services. This is our final demand. This is total output. This is total input. So when you sum this column, it is 36. The total input of the agriculture is 36 and the total output, the total input, which basically this is input. The column showing the input, this is output. So agriculture getting from agriculture $10. Okay, this is monetary values. $10 products from agriculture. $6 worth of products from health. From services $2. So agriculture sector produce. So if you read this, this table, this one, the indigo one, agriculture sector produce 36. So this is the total output of agriculture sector. Worth of output. 10 US dollar of which is used by agriculture itself. So agriculture take as input of 10 from agriculture sector. 6 US dollar by health. Okay. 2 US dollar by services. And 18 US dollar is sold to consumer. And this is total output. Similarly, if we read this green box. So 10 US dollar worth of input from agriculture coming from agriculture. 10 because while producing agriculture need agriculture product. So 10 US dollar of worth of input coming from agriculture, 4 US dollar worth of input coming from health, this one, and 6 US dollar worth of input from services. Okay. And final payment, these are the, uh, let's suppose the intermediate, uh, as I mentioned to you, the primary input, which is including import, which is also including the labor salaries, etc., etc. So I mean, when you add this 36, when you add the first row, it will be the output will be 36. So input will be equal to output. 